Being extraordinary is having a relentless commitment during the unseen hours to work towards mastery of your craft and focus on the fundamentals. Being extraordinary is about doing the little things right every single day. Before I ever took the stage as a corporate keynote speaker, I dedicated my life to helping the world's best basketball players get even better. As a performance coach, my primary responsibility was to help players improve their strength, speed, power, and on-court athleticism. But the only way to do that was to level up their habits, mindset, focus, and discipline, as those traits became the foundation to which the rest of their game was built. So later that day at camp, I went up to Kobe again and say, Kobe, I don't understand. You're the best player in the world. Why are you doing such basic drills? And he flashed that million dollar smile and he gave me a very friendly wink, but he said in a serious tone, why do you think I'm the best player in the world? Because I never get bored with the basics. I had a chance to meet Kevin Durant when he was 15 years old. So I had no idea whether or not he actually liked the workout. So I simply asked him, I said, hey, young buck, did you like that workout? And I remember him looking up and as serious as can be, he said, no, I didn't. But I know this is what I need to do if I ever want to play in the NBA. So when can I see you again, coach? If memory serves, it never took him longer than 12 to 15 minutes to swish five in a row. That young man was Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors, who will go down in history as the greatest shooter that the game has ever seen and it's not by accident, it's not by luck. It's not because his dad played in the NBA, it's because he's willing to hold himself to unparalleled standards. In the first game that the intern recorded for Steve Nash, he delivered 239 high fives, fist bumps, and pats on the butt. He is a furnace of human connection. I didn't have the mindfulness or presence or awareness that I'd like to believe I have now because I don't remember a single word that either one of us said. We talked for 10 minutes and I don't remember a single word, but I'll never forget how he made me feel. He made me feel like I was the most important person in that gym. The same holds true in business. Your personal habits, mindset, focus, and discipline dictate how well you lead how well you sell, and how well you can make a meaningful contribution to everyone and everything around you. That was an epiphanal life-changing lesson for me because it's when I realized that just because something is basic, it doesn't mean that it's easy. Those words are not synonymous and yet people often use them interchangeably. Just because something is basic, it doesn't mean that it's easy. See, life provides us so many opportunities to gather feedback. If we go through the world with our eyes and our ears open and have the humility and vulnerability to take feedback and accept feedback and then respond to it in a favorable way, that's how we grow consistently. What do you stand for? What do you believe in? What are the non-negotiable principles that you use to guide your life? Are you at a point where you live by a standard as opposed to living by emotion? When you can live by core values, instead of living by the roller coaster of feelings that we experience as human beings, you'll become the most magnetic person in any room. In today's day and age where we are literally bombarded with digital distractions hundreds of times every minute of every single day, I don't know that it's realistic to expect ourselves or to expect our team members to have long periods of sustained uninterrupted focus. But what each and every one of us can do is learn how to quickly be aware of when we're distracted or, or when our mind starts to wander and we can quickly refocus that lens and dial back in on what's most important. I now teach leaders and their entire organizations how to utilize these proven principles and develop the same strategies, rituals, and routines as the game's most accomplished players and coaches. Now many of you are servant leaders. You're servant leaders at heart. You're servant leaders in everything that you do. And one of the, the problems though with servant leaders is many times you're so busy serving others that you forget to fill your own tank. And while your intentions may be noble, it's actually an act of selfishness. When you show up as anything less than your best self, you give the team less of a chance to win. That means you're being selfish. And I know that that can be a really challenging concept to wrap your mind around because how can someone be selfish who is always giving and serving? Well, trust me, the people in this room, 
your spouses, your loved ones, your family, your children, they all need you to be your best self. It is not the world's job to conspire to make all of us happy. The vast majority of things that go on in this world are not to my liking and they're not to my preference. It's my job to adapt to them so that I can still live a fulfilled life. And it's the same thing there. We're going to experience losses. We're going to miss shots. We're going to have some bumps and bruises along the way. But how do we as a group, what type of grit and resilience do we show in moving past those? And that's what he would emphasize. We'd never emphasize the loss. We'd always emphasize the lesson. The trigger in the saying that I use is one that I've heard this both from Nick Saban, the head football coach at Alabama, and I've also heard it from Oprah Winfrey. So it has to be true. If those two people are saying it, it has to be true. That the definition of being in the present moment and being able to refocus the lens is to be where your feet are. Whether you're a parent or a leader within the company, holding people accountable shows them that you care. And in order for you all to reach that North Star, you have very high standards. And the key is not just having high standards. Anyone can have high standards. Do you hold each other accountable to executing those high standards? On one hand, you have everything that you know fills your bucket, recharges your battery, and allows you to be the best version of yourself. And then on the other hand, you have what you're actually doing at the bookends of your day. And I wanna see how much crossover there is. Now the next step is finding ways to start integrating list number one into list number two. And if you do that, I promise you, you will see your development, your growth, and your performance skyrocket immediately. All right, you guys ready? Let's end on a high note. I believe in you, I care about you, and I know you can do it. Get those hands ready, I got you. Ready? As you can see, as you can see, you still have some work to do, so do it. Thank you guys so much.